Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're back here at the museum today, but we are not going to be doing too much museum stuff. Instead, we're going to be working on some automation and some farming today. I've been farming a fair amount of trees and for the most part lately, I've been doing those manually because I have yet to work out a decent tree farm design on my own. And I do try and do a lot of this stuff on my own instead of looking up other people's tutorials just to make sure that you guys are getting some original material here in the survival guide and I'm not just stealing somebody else's work. So off camera I have been working on a little bit of tree farming stuff but it's not exactly going according to plan because trees are kind of particular about where exactly they grow. But trees have new cousins from the nether, which actually are a little bit less particular about where they grow. And so I've been able to develop a pretty decent warped and crimson stem farm, which might also start farming a few of those warp blocks and shroom lights for you as well. So we're going to ditch all of the tree farming supplies for now, although I'll definitely need a few of these bone blocks because we'll need a whole lot of bone meal for this farm design. I think we're going to kick it into high gear. We're actually going to start our tree farm design over here, our warped and crimson stem farm rather. We're probably going to do it over here outside of the boundary of the museum for now. And maybe we'll move it into the museum as a permanent exhibit about warped and crimson stem farming and automation and redstone and all of that kind of stuff, or maybe we'll move it back to a more permanent location closer to the center of the world where I have Founders Forge and all of my other existing farms. But I got my redstone box here with me as well, which contains a whole bunch of the materials we're going to need for this. I've also grabbed a little bit more redstone dust from down in the museum archives. We're going to need some water, probably a few other things as well, maybe some leaf blocks or something else that's going to be non-pushable or not dragged around by slime blocks because there is going to be some TNT duplication involved as well. And yeah, maybe I won't get my water from over there. Maybe I'll get it from this slightly safer riverbed over here. So if you've been tree farming in the past, you might find that some of these trees are a little bit particular about the circumstances in which they want to grow. Let's bone meal this oak sapling a couple of times, and that one, of course, grew with no problems. I should probably grab a hoe out of my ender chest so that I can harvest some of these leaves. And when you're in the process of farming trees, you can often find that placing trees next to each other, they grow unimpeded. For example, here we can grow these trees all next to each other in a line and despite the fact that there are leaves overhead and trunks to either side, trees will grow like that without issue. But when you start to put other objects around trees, things that they are less familiar with, then you start to find that there are a couple of issues. One of the common ways of approaching any tree farming project is to basically have a column of pistons pushing the tree trunk away from the area where it grows. For example here, I'll place an oak sapling up against these pistons and we'll set up a very simple redstone circle circuit that's going to power these pistons anytime the tree here grows into a full block. So this circuit is pretty similar to a piston feed tape I've set up before when I was setting up a tree farm in the early stages of this series. We have a power source here. This repeater is going to power the block that grows here when the tree grows into a full oak tree which is going to send a redstone signal around this circuit and into each of these pistons. We have a tower here with a solid block there and a couple of pieces of glass allowing the redstone dust to climb up here and once the pistons here get powered quasi connectivity is going to ensure that both of these pistons get powered because we're powering that one directly and that one receives power diagonally from that piece of redstone dust. The problem here is that I kind of have to spam this sapling with a lot of bone meal in order for it to grow. And the reason for that, and it's grown quite a large tree in the process, is because it has an obstruction here on the side. It doesn't want to grow next to all of these pistons. We also seem to see an issue there where the second piston here didn't fire. All of the other pistons in the circuit did, but the second one did not. We can get around this by rearranging the circuit and having the repeater on this side and a redstone dust on that side as long as it is traveling into this block here. And there you'll go. You'll find a much more consistent piston output that way but we still have the problem, of course, of the oak tree not wanting to grow. Luckily for us, however, I have realized that warped and crimson fungus does not behave the same way. It will actually be a little bit more resilient and a lot less picky about the circumstances in which it grows. And that one there did not provide an instant growth, but it only took five bone meal as opposed to the near half stack I put into that first oak tree. And you'll see that it grew pretty tall, actually, pretty wide as well. And of course, these leaves 
what you think of as the leaves, the warped wart blocks here, will not decay. So there are a couple of other potential issues we run into when we want to farm this stuff, which can of course be resolved by a quick hoeing of some of the warped wart and the shroom lights up here but it does mean that the trunk gets pushed out nice and easily. And just so I can demonstrate that that wasn't a fluke, we'll break down a little bit more of the bone meal here and we'll grow a whole bunch of these. And this can of course be done in Java edition at least by holding the wart fungus in my offhand, the bone meal in my main hand and just spamming that. And look at that, we get those growing very, very fast, a little bit faster than we were seeing from the tree farm earlier. And we have a nice wall of the warped stem blocks coming out here ready to be harvested which of course we're going to do later on in this episode with a tnt duplicator but as you can see we are only using a fraction of the warped stem blocks we're getting from this because these warp trees and crimson trees have a tendency to grow pretty tall when given the opportunity and we haven't capped this off with anything in fact i tried capping this off with some blocks in creative and the tree just grew through them thankfully in java edition we also don't encounter the problem that's happening in bedrock edition right now where the blocks of these warped and crimson trees will actually replace existing blocks as you can see there we have a couple of leaf blocks that are clearly not replaced it hasn't replaced any of the blocks of the mechanism here either so it is safe enough to be able to farm this stuff without worrying about it replacing any of the blocks of a larger redstone mechanism not only that but we do want some of the other blocks that this tree is producing things like the shroom lights and the warped warp blocks might actually be quite useful to us the warped water at the very least makes a very effective compost to create more bone meal for the farm so it might be worth gathering those and the way we are going to do that is by expanding this piston setup to be even wider and maybe even encompass the entirety of the width of these trees now there is a lot of variation in the way these trees can form but for the most part it's going to be a stem block all the way up the center there's usually no variation in that it's just a single trunk but then a bunch of nether wart or warped wart blocks will generate around the outside these can be from anywhere from about five to seven blocks wide so in theory if we wanted to have a pad of pistons it would need to be about that wide to encapsulate the entirety of the mess of these trees however i think i'm going to keep my design to five blocks wide here for the sake of the length of redstone dust we're going to have to apply to each of these and just the sh the sheer amount of stuff it's going to be pushing we also need to make sure that it's getting destroyed at the end by tnt duplicators which are just going to be providing a near infinite amount of tnt to this whole design and that's going to be a lot of blocks to destroy and i want to make sure this thing remains reliable so we're just going to stick with the central five block wide section that this produces and of course that's going to generate with a fair amount of height as well as we've just seen so we want to make sure that this piston section is five blocks wide but potentially up to 20 or 30 blocks tall i'm not sure if we're going to go all the way up there in this episode but the fact is that you can now we have to consider exactly how all of these pistons are going to be powered we know we can power them with quasi connectivity but we need to make sure a signal reaches all of these pistons and it's here that we start to encounter some issues with the directionality of redstone dust because if i place some redstone wire along the back here which i'll need to go and grab a little bit more wire from the box for if i split the redstone wire out in two directions here you'll notice of course that it's not entering any of the pistons it doesn't redirect the redstone dust to input into any of these pistons and of course because we're using transparent blocks so that i can continue the redstone wire up a tower you'll notice that these blocks don't even get powered because the redstone wire is not traveling across a solid block so when i place a block there we're still only getting those two bottom pistons firing and none of these upper pistons here are firing at all now this is where target blocks come in very handy because we can use target blocks to reroute the redstone power into the back of each of these pistons and not introduce any delay that's kind of the crucial factor here is if we want all of these pistons to fire in unison we're going to try and introduce as little delay into the circuit as possible and while we could direct the redstone power individually into these pistons with repeaters we can do it with target blocks and make sure that they all fire at the speed that the redstone dust is getting powered so we're going to redirect things a little bit we're going to place a glass block here so that it can travel backwards and up one block we're going to place another glass block there and this is going to have a whole row of redstone dust attached to it and then we're going to attach target blocks to the backs of all of these pistons here making sure that 
that each of those is connected up with redstone. Let's hop over here so we can take another quick look at this circuit. The redstone current is going to travel along here. It's going to hit those two pistons. They're going to be powered as normal. And then it's also traveling up onto this row of redstone dust. And from here, of course, we can continue a tower upwards in much the same formation. Have another row of glass over the top here, place redstone dust coming up here, transferring the current, and add that to another set of pistons up here as well. And that's going to be traveling up the side of that block there. It's kind of difficult to see from this angle, sorry, so I'll just pop up onto a block here so you can see the redstone dust is actually traveling up that glass block and onto the top, and it's going to continue the current upwards. You can transfer redstone power upwards, but not downwards in this way using transparent blocks. You can do the same thing with slabs if you wanted to. I'm just using glass because it might be a little bit easier. But now when I place a block here on this piston, the entire pad of pistons above it fires. And once again, I'm going to continue this pattern upwards using target blocks on the backs of these regular old pistons. And we're going to see a massive pad of pistons, all of which can fire at the same time up until we get to the point where the redstone dust is running out of power because of the length of it. And that's where we need to start introducing repeaters, but a minimal amount of repeaters to make sure that signal strength just gets boosted where it needs it. And once we're done with that, I kind of ran out of pistons, but we can add more in a second. We have something that is roughly the outline, the kind of silhouette of one of those smaller warped fungi trees. And let's give this a try and see what we get in terms of results from this when we grow this from a single warp fungus. There we go, basically the entire thing gets pushed over and flattened like this, allowing for more space where we can grow another warp fungus. And funnily enough, that might even be as easy as bone mealing the grass once or twice to get one to grow here. And while that doesn't always happen, we can always replace that with a warped fungus. And then we just bone meal it a couple more times and the entire thing gets pushed out once again. So we have this ever expanding wall of warped fungus and the same could be true of the crimson fungus as well. Now it has grown a few of these around the back and filled in some spaces in the mechanism here. But if we didn't want that to happen, all we would need to do is make sure that that stuff was cleared out. And some of the stuff like stained glass or you know, anything we wanted to fill the mechanism with would get put in. But the blocks here are just filling in the areas where we don't have any redstone components or anything like that. It's not replaced any blocks and ultimately it's not doing any harm right now. We could always just throw in a few of our placeholder blocks, any red concrete that we have lying around or something like that if we want to guarantee that those blocks don't end up there. But if we wanted this wall of pistons to reach as high as the tallest of our crimson fungi or warped fungi could grow, then all that needs is a little bit of a signal boost up here. And we're going to do that using some repeaters. Now, there are, these are obviously uh, the only repeaters I want to introduce into the circuit here because they will cause a fractional amount of delay. The, the pistons up here will fire one tick after the rest of the pistons down below. And we don't want to have that happen too much because too much delay will mean that these things are firing while the TNT is falling and that leads to a little bit of trouble in terms of timings. But what I want to do is have two repeaters facing outwards into these pieces of redstone dust to make sure that this target block and this target block get power. We're just going to add two more redstone dust to the top here, wrapping that around to make sure that block receives power from the redstone dust here. And then all we need to do is take an output from one or both of these pieces of redstone dust here, transfer that up here, and have that run along the length of the next set of glass and the next set of target blocks goes here the next set of pistons beyond that and we simply boost the signal once as it goes up the tower so with our two repeaters in place there i'll need to go and grab a few more regular pistons so that i can fire these the reason we're not using sticky pistons of course is because the delay on this is long enough that they will simply retract the blocks again which is not what we want but with a, a few more pistons crafted we can make a pretty tall wall of pistons all of which will be able to shift any tree that we can throw at it or at least any warped or crimson fungus that we can throw at it with the addition of a few more pistons, this wall is now 18 blocks high, which is not actually the maximum height of one of these warped or crimson trees. They can actually grow to heights of, I think, 27 blocks tall. But even so, this will take into account the majority of the variations of warped and crimson fungus that are going to grow. So let me spam a little bit more bone meal on these. We might actually have to take out some of this to make sure that the stuff will get pushed around. But as you can see, I've already tested it once and we've created a flat wall of warped foliage all the way down there. So that's going to flatten everything out. All of the warped warp blocks are going to get pushed along. All of the shroom lights are going to get pushed along. 
and eventually all of that stuff will get destroyed at this end by duplicated TNT. And <laughs> amusingly enough, even though they look like glowstone, the shroom lights are still going to be destroyed and drop as items as well. They are not so fragile that they break, unlike some of the other stuff like glass or glowstone, where you might find it breaking down, being destroyed, or just breaking down into its component parts. I've cleared out all of the blocks that were there so we can get a slightly better idea of how this is all going to work. And one thing you'll notice is that the Nylium has converted back to Netherrack at some point in this process. A block has been over the top of here for long enough, or the random tick has meant that the Netherrack there got converted from Nylium back into Netherrack. So all we really need to do to make sure that that is no longer a problem is add a diagonal somewhere around here to leave a piece of Nylium that we can just have as our seed Nylium, basically, so that it can turn any Netherrack that is at an adjacent block into Nylium, and just by placing it here in one corner, we're able to do that. I'm going to remove some more of the other blocks from around here, because if you bone meal the Nylium, the nether foliage will actually spread a little bit further than that, so we're probably going to create some sort of artificial platform here that's not made out of more natural blocks like grass. But if all I do is stand in here with the warped fungus in one hand and the bone meal in the other, and I start bone mealing this, there we go, that whole section up there flattens out and every time I grow a fungus here the piston should fire meaning that eventually we end up with a whole row of this stuff and there we go it's all been pushed to the extremities to the point where it can be no longer be pushed and what you end up with is this kind of very staircasey pattern of it because they're all growing at different heights but you'll notice even though this stuff here has jammed up because these last few blocks are pushed to the extent where pistons can push them it's only a 12 block reach with a piston, you will find that everything inside of there has all been pushed along as well. And we could destroy that with TNT when it gets pushed towards the end of this section here. So the next thing we'll need to do is dig out some sort of trench here where the water streams can propel each of the items that are broken back towards a central collection area with some toppers and chests and the kind of stuff that's going to collect all of the items into one place for us. Maybe even sort out the shroom lights and the warped warp blocks from the stem blocks if we want to get fancy about it. We will of course need to build up some TNT duplicators around here as well and I'll go through that process step by step for those of you who haven't watched the episode all about TNT duplication. So the first step of this is to make sure that everything on the ground here is both safe and able to be collected. So I've simply dug out an area here where we have water streams at each of the corners, which makes an uneven pattern traveling down here, but I've compensated for that by putting another water stream starting here, having this kind of blob here where all of the water will stretch out from there, and then two more water streams in either corner transferring everything down into this hopper and the hopper will collect everything and transport it into some chests on the opposite side which we could of course make as low down in the world as we want to just set up a ladder down here and have a kind of alternating series of hoppers and chests collecting everything and storing it for us so we don't have to worry about that while we are standing at the machine. The next step is going to be to either get hold of a couple of dispensers and a lot of TNT or to build a TNT duplicator and I have a fair amount of TNT in here from my adventures blast mining for ancient debris in the nether but I don't feel like using any more of this than I really have to so we're going to set up a couple of TNT duplicators, and I'm thinking because of the extra amount of mass here, the sheer amount of blocks we are trying to destroy, I think we're going to need maybe two or three. So the main thing is we're going to need for that are a bunch of slime blocks, a few sticky pistons, the TNT, of course, we'll need some walls for that as well. We need a bunch of blocks that cannot be moved if they are attached to the side of slime blocks. Things like leaves or glazed terracotta are usually the best things to use. We're also going to need a couple of coral fans. And for that, I'll need to go searching for a coral reef or head back to my storage system at Founders Forge. But I feel like looking for a coral reef since we are so close to such a large ocean. Well, I had to head home for these ones, so I'm going to reset my spawn point here. Ended up grabbing myself a few stacks of leaves and eight tube coral fans. I shouldn't need all that many, but just in case things go wrong, as they frequently do with TNT duplicators, let's get some scaffolding up on the go and let's build ourselves a TNT duper. Of course, one of the first things you need to make sure of is that you're not going to drop TNT in a place that's going to blow up the bottom half of the TNT duper itself. And I think around here is probably going to be the best height for it, perhaps even a little higher judging by the area of this topmost canopy section 
of blocks there. I think we're at Y98, which is roughly 10 blocks above the topmost row of pistons. I think we'll probably be okay here. And I want to make sure that it lands somewhere around the edge here. I think we're going to be one block back from where the blocks will actually extend to, so we can drop it onto a piece of obsidian down there. And that's going to mean that nothing below that obsidian gets exploded. We don't want to drop it into the water because then it won't be really very effective at all. So at the top of the scaffold here, we're going to build a platform of leaves, which is going to have a water stream directing the TNT into a specific area. From here, we're going to make a wall around the outside here out of leaves, and the leaves are important because they will not stick to slime blocks, meaning this whole section isn't going to get pushed around by the slime blocks that are duplicating the TNT. Coming back up here, we're the sign that's going to block the water from falling into this hole here, making sure that the water stops there. We can place a water bucket at this end, which is going to encourage the TNT, once it is primed, to flow down into this hole and land in a very precise position. From here, we're going to start building up the TNT duper itself with an L shape of slime blocks there. We're going to add a TNT onto this block, a wall above that, and a coral fan on the block next to it. That's very important because the coral fan produces this interesting effect that updates the TNT block when this whole slime block contraption moves. And that is what's going to cause the TNT to duplicate. Right now, there are a lot of spaces this TNT could jump into when it was lit, thanks to the fact that TNT receives a very small amount of momentum in a random direction when it is first primed. So we're gonna build up a section of leaves around the side here and at the back to make sure that nothing falls through. On top of this, we're going to build another L shape of slime like that. And on top of that, we're gonna place a detector rail on which will sit a minecart. It can be any kind of minecart, just a regular kind of minecart will do. Now we're going to come out the back here and probably add a little bit more scaffolding to this tower so that we can place some sort of solid block that's going to support a sticky piston, which is going to be moving the slime blocks around. Let's use warped planks. It feels very on brand for this contraption already. So we place the sticky piston here. We want a lever attached to these planks and then we need a minecart to go in that position and that should prime our TNT duplicator. I'll fish a minecart out of my rails box and and then we will need an obsidian block to go somewhere down here. And for the obsidian, I think I'm just going to break down one of the ender chests that I carry with me in my ender chest. So we just use a fortune pickaxe to break that down. We get eight obsidian and we're going to place that. I guess it'll have to be here. Yeah, I think that should work out fine. So with the minecart placed there, all we need to do is activate this lever, which should push everything into position with the TNT underneath there, the wall above the coral fan and then when we pull everything back into position the minecart there is activating the detector rail which has not yet updated the powering of this tnt block but once we pull the lever one more time it produces a piece of tnt which is going to fall directly onto that obsidian block and blow up everything around it, including my scaffolding. But luckily, <laughs> that has not caused any other damage, and it has broken a bunch of the blocks that were right here at the end of this section here, making sure that everything gets destroyed and should be washed down into that hopper. And hopefully when we check the chest, we should find a bunch of warped stem and maybe a couple of warped warp blocks in there. We do. Amazing stuff. Okay, so that is working splendidly well. And at this point, the problem becomes one of timing. We need to make sure this duplicator is producing enough TNT that it's going to blow up any blocks that are down there. And unfortunately, it looks like we are too high up in the air for that TNT to make it all the way to the ground, meaning I don't think it has actually destroyed any of those blocks. And if the TNT duplicates in the second position there, it's actually not going to reach these blocks in time. It might blow up some of the higher blocks, but it won't reach the lower ones. And by that point, we could have produced enough of these crimson wood blocks that the whole system might have jammed up. So I'm wondering if maybe we should not have quite so many pistons in here. We should take some of those down and just push out a section that we're able to destroy with a single TNT blast, or at least a TNT blast from slightly lower, which means it's always going to reach its target. Or if you're me, you triple down. I've made two more TNT duplicators aiming in from either side and landing on these obsidian blocks here. And hopefully that should be enough to take out anything that grows around here. It should also start to take out some of this foliage that's creeping in from the side, or it will land on that foliage from above, break those blocks and drop them down. And hopefully all of that stuff will work out pretty well. The main problem being right now that I need to maybe dig this down one block lower or turn the outside of this into blast proof material like obsidian, because unfortunately it is destroying some of the blocks around the outside, including some of the grass blocks here. I didn't think the explosion radius would really reach that far with obsidian blocks there, but 
apparently it does. The other flaw is that the wandering trader has made his way into the system, <laughs> so probably going to have to deal with this guy or just wait for him to despawn. But he is trading me Nautilus shells, which is one of the few things I actually like to get from the wandering trader. No need for them right now, of course, but happy to know that he is at least trading something useful this time. So the last step here is going to be to make sure that all of these TNT duplicators can fire at the exact same time, with the logic there being if they don't fire at the same time, then one TNT could potentially blow up and cause one of the other TNT to fly off in a different direction and damage the surrounding landscape or whatever I end up building around this. So I would definitely prefer to make sure that doesn't happen. The other thing is going to be making sure that it can keep up with the output speed of this machine, considering that we can grow warped or crimson trees pretty quickly, we will need to make sure they can be destroyed pretty quickly as well. So I'm thinking an Etho Hopper Clock with only a few items in there should do the trick. So we're going to have the two comparators facing this way and this way, two hoppers facing into each other in the center, a redstone dot there, a redstone dot there. We're going to have an observer detecting the activity of this redstone dot. We're going to have a sticky piston facing this way and this way, shuttling back and forth a redstone block between the two of those and inside here we're going to have three items those three warped planks should do the trick so that's actually going to be moving back and forth quite quickly and hopefully that should produce a fair amount of tnt when we place an observer here all right let's see if that activates all of them no nope, looks like the signal strength is just not long enough it's only activating one of these and it's not quite reaching the end of the line here. Okay. Well, I've already made a bit of a mess down here, but luckily none of the complicated stuff up here seems to have blown up. And this is probably going to be a case of moving this whole mechanism one block back and then just installing repeaters at vital locations. Okay, this time we have a repeater with a one tick delay coming as the output from this observer and powering this block here, which should power the piston below it. We also have a repeater over here boosting the signal to each one of those wood blocks and that should be good to go. All I need to do is set up the hopper clock with the three warped planks again and this time all three of the TNT dupers should fire at once and the entire thing goes sky high and that's looking pretty good to me hopefully they all continue to fall at the same rate or some of them are falling slightly before the others but that's one heck of an explosion and it doesn't seem to be breaking much else around it other than the landscape Okay, I've added a lever onto the hover clock, which has disabled that for now, so we don't have to worry about this entire thing exploding around me while I'm working on it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of blown my collection area to smithereens, but that should be easy enough to fix with a little bit more obsidian. Now, obviously, it's made a pretty sizable dent in the landscape. We could probably fill that in with some slightly more blast-resistant blocks or just redesign this whole collection area if we need to. But down here, we have nearly a stack of warped stem blocks, and that's without the farm even really running. That's just been clearing out some of the area that's already generated here. So, Let's run this farm for a little while. Let's turn the TNT back on. I'm going to bring my camera account in so you can see it all happening from the outside. And let's see how much we can collect with this new TNT powered warped tree farm.
Well, that certainly was a lot of TNT. Thank goodness we're using duplicators and my right ear is kind of ringing right now. But we went through our entire supply of the uh, warped fungus. I grew a bit more crimson fungus as well. The entire thing has got completely surrounded in these blocks. And as you can see, they are now growing up past the limit of my piston walls. So we could potentially put some blocks up there to prevent them growing any higher if we want to. But let's take a look at the output chest down here. That is looking pretty good. I did end up killing the uh, wandering trader, but there we go. That's not looking too shabby. I've got a block of nylium in there as well, thanks to the fact that I replaced the warp nylium for crimson nylium so we could grow the crimson trees. But that's a pretty successful output for this farm, considering that was only a stack each. I mean, less than a stack of the warped, but definitely a full stack of the crimson. We got ourselves five stacks of wood and roughly the same amount of wart. Not as many shroom lights as I was hoping for, but I think those end up in the higher reaches of these and they typically don't generate more than one or two per plant. And I don't think it's entirely lossless because there may still be some blocks that end up on the top of the existing blocks here. Like there were a couple of logs spinning there while I couldn't really reach them and the TNT might end up blowing up some of them while they are still item entities. But the majority of it is ending up in these water streams and the results, as you can see, are pretty great. We've got ourselves a really healthy supply of crimson and warped wood there. That's going to be very, very useful. I think the way I would revise this farm at this point is just to lower the height of the TNT duplicators so the blast around here can be a little bit more consistent and to reduce the size of the piston wall, block off any blocks above it to make sure that we're not getting super high crimson or warped fungus and just make sure that we're generating some of the shorter ones. It might need a little bit more bone meal just to make sure that the smaller ones will grow and it's not trying to grow a larger one, but the results I think will be pretty spectacular. But I think that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed checking out this warped and crimson wood farm. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.